In this session, we'll be talking about how we can use restorative practices to cultivate belonging and inclusion, to ensure equity and to repair harm in our school contexts. Restorative practices are a set of skills to develop community and to manage conflict by repairing harm and restoring relationships. The primary research base for restorative practices is found in social bonding and the neurobiological components of creating trusting relationships. All of us are hardwired to connect with others in the same way that we need food and shelter, people need deep and meaningful relationships. Research shows that classrooms in which teachers used restorative practices like facilitating circles, giving voice, and reintegrating students into class after misbehavior, they reported much higher rates on school climate surveys. Students who had experienced restorative practices in their classrooms had more positive feelings towards their teacher and peers, more voice and input, and an increased connectedness to their schools. They had better peer friendships, developed more social skills, they were more empathetic and more assertive. Using restorative practices was even associated with lower rates of cyberbullying. Using restorative practices also did something interesting for equity. The number of days lost to suspension declined across the school, but even more so for low income and students of color. In other words, not only did restorative practices improve school climate and relationships, but it significantly improved equity in the discipline of these schools, and it became a tool for inclusion. So how does restorative practices address diversity and improve equity and inclusion in schools? Creating classroom atmospheres that are inclusive and equitable have to be an intentional act, and leaders must share a commitment to building structures into the school day so that community and connectedness can be formed. Diversity is valued in circles because the quality of the circle is improved by hearing different perspectives flowing from the lived experience of each participant. Circles are inherently anti-racist because they honor every person's individual story. And there's equity in a circle because no one's more important than anyone else. We take turns, listen deeply, and we don't interrupt, cultivating trust and promoting fairness. Circles also promote inclusion, validating the experiences and the needs of everyone in the community, particularly those who have been marginalized, oppressed, or harmed. Now in schools, there are both the proactive and then the responsive components to restorative practices that work in tandem to create the equitable and inclusive school culture that we want. The proactive component of restorative practices are classroom circles. As you use circles in your classroom and students follow the circle guidelines like respectfully listening to each other, holding back judgments, speaking honestly, they'll begin to trust the process. Once you've proactively created a community across the school, when issues arise, you can respond by using the restorative conversations to help you solve problems and repair harm. So let's talk about responsive components of restorative practices that we can use in our school context. When there are incidents of harm, including things like exclusion, bias, microaggressions, or even overt acts of racism, homophobia, or sexism, we can use the restorative questions. There's two sets of questions, one for the person who did the harm and another for the person who was harmed. For the student who harmed the other person, you can ask what happened, what were they thinking and feeling at the time, who was affected by it, and what can be done to make things right moving forward. And for the student who was harmed, we ask restorative questions too. What did they think when they realized what had happened? What impact did the incident have on them? And what's been the hardest thing? What needs to happen to make things right? When these voices have historically been marginalized, it's even more important that they be elevated and heard. Once I worked with a fifth grade teacher who had a boy in her class making racist comments to an African-American student in the class. The teacher had told him to stop and reminded him of the classroom expectation that in our class we speak to each other respectfully and using words like those to put down others is unacceptable. For most students, being reminded of the expectation in the class and being told to stop, it's sufficient. But this student continued making the comments when the teacher wasn't present. So I coached the teacher to have a restorative conversation separately with the boy who was making the comments and then with the girl who was being targeted. She met with them individually and she asked them the restorative questions and then asked if they'd be willing to meet. They agreed and so she was able to facilitate a restorative conversation between the two students using the restorative questions. 
The boy apologized, and he said he'd stop, and the girl was empowered by the conversation to know that she had the teacher's support in making it stop. The comments turned out to be a lot more frequent than the teacher initially thought, so she wanted to facilitate a classroom circle to address the impact that the comments had on the entire class. I helped her prepare a circle script that began with making it clear that the situation between the students had been resolved, but now the teacher wanted to have a broader discussion about how does it feel when people make racial comments? And as a class, how do we want to treat each other moving forward? And what commitments are we willing to make next time when we have unkind behavior in our class? The students all shared how uncomfortable they felt, how they didn't know what to do to make it stop, and then they expressed a willingness to speak up next time it happened, at school or anywhere else, to make sure no one was made to feel the way that their classmate did. The class moved forward without any more incidents that year. Circles provide a shared space to hold strong emotions and uncomfortable topics safely so that they can be used to help students share their feelings and experiences about issues like race, gender, and identity. We can ask things like, what does race mean to you? Or is gender an important part of your identity on a daily basis? Or what's the hardest thing talking about privilege? Issues like these shape our worldview, our behavior and choices, perceptions and relationships, and unfortunately, they're the sources of conflicts and misunderstandings at school. Because these types of circles need an even greater level of vulnerability and students need to feel very safe, they really should only be attempted after the class has established trust through regular community building circles. When wrongdoing has occurred and people have been harmed, an important part of restorative practices is providing an opportunities for students who did harm to be accountable. Now there's a difference between a traditional and a restorative approach to accountability. In traditional discipline, accountability means that the student who broke the rule is punished. In a restorative discipline framework, accountability means understanding the impact of their actions, taking responsibility for their choices, and even coming up with ways to repair the harm. The reason we can use circles to address these potentially explosive subjects is because we don't focus on whether someone is wrong or in trouble, or whether they should or shouldn't have said or done that thing. Instead, we focus on the impact on others, and we create a space for dialogue and engagement. Now, we absolutely respect freedom of speech among our students, but we also know that with freedom of speech comes responsibility because our words and our actions or inactions impact others. To that end, we really must create explicit structures like classroom circles to develop relationships, strengthen inclusion, and to build a culture of empathy and compassion in our school community. Then, when inequities or incidents of harm occur, restorative circles can provide meaningful ways to repair relationships and to heal. Go to my website, lauramoyman.com, and download free resources, watch free training videos, check out my online courses, and connect with me.